gotta get ready before class starts. I look presentable for the, the youngins out there on the internets. Uh. Hey, welcome to class. I'm your film professor. But you haven't seen me wear a tie before, have you? I haven't either, so it, it's it, we're, all, we're in the same boat. Have you ever wanted your film to look like the major blockbusters, Alien Resurrection, perhaps Domino, Terminator Salvation, what about War of the Worlds, or even Paycheck? There's one thing that those movies have in common with each other, and that is, well, obviously, they should have won their respected Oscars for those years, because they're just masterpieces. Of course, we're talking about Bleach Bypass. <laughs> Well, welcome to your masterclass on bleach bypassing. I'm Professor Flashes, and I will be handing down all of my knowledge about bypassing your bleach. To be quite honest, bleach bypassing is actually easier to see 41. No joke. I wouldn't joke. I'm a professor. That's uncalled for if I was joking. So I know I talked about bleach bypassing last time. It's something that I enjoy doing, um, experimenting with chemicals like a mad scientist. Last time I showed you what Lomochrome Purple looked like bypassed. But I thought, why not show you what actually bleach bypassing normal C41 film would look like? So obviously yours truly and I went out to go shoot. We went for a hike because we're getting fat, thanks Corona. And I thought it would be a good exercise, no pun intended, for bleach bypassing. So when we were trekking up that hill, I decided to shoot Portra 400. It's a good base film because everyone loves Portra 400. Everyone knows what Portra looks like normally, so why not test with that? As I mentioned in the previous video, bleach bypassing wants to be underexposed one and a half to two stops. This time I exposed the Portra 400 at 1250. That gets me around that one and a half stops. Remember, bleach bypassing is hard on your highlights, so you want to meter to protect those as much as possible. So for normal C41, you have the developer, the bleach, and the fixer. The developer is designed to initiate reduction of the silver highlights in each of the emulsion layers into metallic silvers that make up the negative. But don't worry, stay positive, because that's where the bleach fixer comes in. So the bleaching process takes those metallic silvers and makes them silver highlights, and then the fixer removes the silver highlights completely. Theoretic. So by skipping that bleach portion, you end up with a higher silver retention in the film. And that is what creates the increased contrast and the desaturated colors. Yeah, but if bleach and fixer are together, how do you separate those? Well, I had a funny, funny joke last episode, so let's just play that back. <laughs> well, by getting a strainer, of course. Just pour the blicks in and just use the, the, the strainer. Just don't make spaghetti afterwards. That, that would be a mistake. No, no, no. You get a fixer separately. Black and white fixers work well. So with that boring mumbo jumbo out of the way, let's get started. So here's what you'll need. A C41 kit, whether it's Arista, Cinestill, Unicolor, or Tetanol. I'm using Arista, but I've also used Cinestill in the past. You'll also need a separate fixer. I use a generic rapid fixer, a cargo brand, if you will. You'll also be needing a stopping agent or good old H2O. It's important to stay hydrated. And of course, you'll need all the accoutrement that goes with normal film developing. So with all of that out of the way, it's time to develop. And first things first, very first thing that you need to do, you gotta pick your music. How are you supposed to get into the developing groove without some sweet, sweet jams? Let's see. I think I'll be choosing Prince. After you put on some rocking tunes, let's start the development. The first step is to heat up the water bath for your developer and your water for the pre-bath. Just like normal C41 color development, your developing temperature needs to be at 102. Unlike C41 developing, you will not need to put your fixer in the temperature controlled bath. The fixer can stay at room temperature. So while those bad boys are coming up to temperature, you can start prepping your film. Get out your Patterson tank 
or your lab box and spend some time getting to know your emulsion a little bit better. But once you're done fumbling around in the dark trying to spool your film, your chemicals should be up to temp. So get yourself in the bathroom so we can start with the pre-bath. Pour your water into the tank and set your timer for one minute. This will help get your film up to temp, preparing for your developer. Once that timer is up, you're ready for your developer. Now, just like normal C41 developing, you set your timer for three and a half minutes, agitating every 30 seconds. Now, after your three and a half minutes are up, it's time for a stop bath. Now I've done both ways. I've done good old H2O and now been using a stop bath. With a stop bath, it instantly just with chemicals, just like <clears throat> punches your developer in the face and says, no, you stop it. You stop it right now. With water, it's more of a gentler approach. For good old H2O, a 30 second bath should be fine. If you have a stopping agent, then 10 seconds in, out, it's Dunzel Washington. Thus moving on to the fixer. This is where the magic happens. Roll up your sleeves and you just get dirty. <sighs> so fixing. Your developing kit should have information on the times that you should be developing and using your Blix for. For the Arista kit, it says to agitate your Blix for six and a half minutes. So I translated that Blix time over to my Rapid Fixer. Now I know Cinestill says to use your Blix at eight minutes, which I've done before when I was bleached bypassing with Cinestill. So in the end of the day, who knows, man? Pick one, I went with 6.30. So after that, pour the fixer in and agitate accordingly. All of this is the same as color processing. You just skip the Blix portion and you add some rapid fixer in there and there you go. I could have just summed it up right there. Now, after your timer gets done with your rapid fixer, Hop into the shower. You got got to clean off that dirty, dirty film. Just wipe it clean from a hard days of work. So after you hop out of the shower for a good three minutes, put some stabilizer on it to stabilize the image. At this point, guess what? We've just successfully bleached bypassed. Hang that film up to dry. You're done. Give yourself a pat on the back. You've just learned yourself a new skill. It wasn't that hard. You just ugh, take a load off now. Ugh. That's it, that's all it takes. It's easy. Why don't people do this more often? Now all we gotta do is put our feet up and wait for it to dry. Ugh. Ugh. Just sit back and put on a little alien resurrection. And after it dries, put that thing in the scanner and check it out because we wanna know what it looks like now.
You know, it's been an honor being your, your teacher through this process. I love watching you grow, blossom into wonderful, beautiful, experimental photographers, all with your own subject matters that express who you are deep down inside. As your teacher, I'm allowed to give you homework. So if you end up bleach bypassing and want to show me your results, my email's down there. So do that and I'll, I'll give you an A. Yeah, an A, just right off the bat. You put A, A for effort. So might as well give it to you, right? There you go, party on. Well, I don't know, this teacher's pooped. So I'm ready to just uh, put my feet up and relax, you know, just anyway, I hope you learned a thing or two, just like always. And if you didn't, well, you can do what you want. I'm not gonna tell you. Never do, never will, never have. All I'm doing is vomiting information. Has this gone on way too long? Yeah, it has. So go watch Greeny Days. Bye.